Now, in the first lecture on family, I gave you George Peter Murdoch's definition of family, and also presented some variations in family and the institution of marriage. There are some other interesting variations, or at least for understanding the sociology of family, you need to know a few more concepts, I will write them, and then we will apply our sociological perspectives to family. Like monogamy, polygamy, polyandry, and you see there are so much of there are many other variations. See, if you think of you, you uh, yourself, will become aware of that there are so many patterns varying according to community, region, religion, and so on. For example, while in among Hindus today, not always, today among Hindus and according to Hindu law. Monogamy is the monogamy is the legally permissible form of family. If you are a Hindu, you do not have the right to have two or more wives. If you have two or more wives, you can lose your government job. And legal action can be taken against you. Among Muslims, because Islam permits so. Muslims are permitted to go up to four wives and they can also keep a number of concubines. There is no restriction on concubines. In Hindi, we call it Rakhel, women with whom they have sexual relationship but who do not have the status of a wife. To be wife is to have certain legal rights. So there are concubines who do not have legal rights. But this was not always the case. Hindus were also polygamous at one time. And surveys have shown that this is only a myth that Muslims have four wives. In reality, the extent of polygamy among Muslims is not significantly more than among Hindus. As a matter of fact, surveys have shown that in many parts of the country, the practice of polygamy is more among Hindus than among Muslims. So it's only a myth that Muslims can go up to four. They can, religiously they can, legally they can. But the, the dominant form of family among Muslims is also monogamy. Then there are variations that if there are many women married to a man, they may be sisters. If there are many men married to one woman, they may be brothers. In Punjab, this kind of marriage was often seen. It's especially if there is a need, somebody's spouse dies, then to take care of that man or woman, there can be polygamous arrangements. Like nuclear joint family and like monogamy, polygamy, we also make a distinction between patriarchal, patriarchal and matriarchal family. Or sometime patrifocal. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patri for father, archy for power. Patriarchal family is that family in which father is more powerful than mother. Matriarchy is that family in which mother is more powerful 
than father. Some related terms are patrilineal, matrilineal. Patrilineal means that the lineage, the descent comes from father's side. Matrilineal, mother's side. Patriarchy, matriarchy, patrilineal, matrilineal, patrifocal, matrifocal. Just now, uh, Mr. Sarvendi Yadav was telling me that what I said about Tali right of Nair family can be better understood if I say that Nair family was matriarchal and matrilineal. Uh, I don't know whether you call it a weakness of sociology or the merit of sociology that it permits several interpretations and because sociology has not actually come to that stage when something can be described scientifically in a value neutral dispassionate manner different field workers different writers different anthropologists write their own stories so the story of tali right marriage which i narrated here was taken from the latest edition of M. Haralambas. In old Haralambas, which is there in our library, nothing is written about Tali women. It is only in the new edition of the book. In some other book, uh, Mr. Yadav was referring to, Nair women or Nair community must be seen as matriarchal matrilineal, matriarchal. Mother is more powerful. So, and it's matrifocal. After marriage, and he was telling me that this Tali, or the first marriage, takes place. What I read in Haralambas was that there is a Tali marriage before puberty, and after that, other marriages are called Sambandham. One is Tali marriage, Tali right, and others are called Sambandham. Relations. Sambandh is a Sanskrit term for relations. Now I am told that in, in the version of this marriage written somewhere else, that this first marriage takes place with a Nambudri Brahmin. This is another interesting aspect. Yeah, I have also heard and I have also read this in some other context. Nambudri, Nambudri is a community of Brahmins in Kerala. Among Nambudris, only the eldest son is married. And the eldest son is married to a Nair woman through Tali right. Other, uh, if a Nambudri has say five sons, then only the first son will get married to a Nair woman or sometime to a uh, woman of their own caste, Nambudri. Other Nambudris or the younger uh, brothers are not legally married. Younger brothers of uh, that Nambudri Brahman are supposed to maintain only Sambandham. Yadav also told me that what I described that any Nair, mo any Nair man can go to any Nair woman. That is not entirely correct. In the description that he read, uh, he found that there must be some concerns, some consensus between the men and the women. 
actually what i read to justify that haralambos even said that because all nair men have access to all nair women kind of or to women of lower caste so when a nair man in the night enter the house of a nair woman he keeps his weapons outside the house so it, if any other nair man comes and he sees that the weapons are there that means some other nair has entered the house so this second late comer will not enter the house and he will sleep in the veranda and go back uh, before the day begins by seeing the weapons at the door the new visitor will simply sleep in the veranda and leave before the day starts there are versions and why this happens you know, this can happen i understand why this should happen actually in, as i said one day that concepts are concepts and reality is reality by using concepts we are only trying to describe reality but reality is not concept and because of this difference between concepts and reality what is written in words depends a lot not only on the reality but on the understanding interest sensitivity background biographical situation of the writer maybe uh, if a contemporary nair writes this story what harlambas has written he can find quite offensive or a nair woman can find it quite offensive to read what harlambas has has been writing so he will be much more sympathetic to nair condition and he will say that no no what harlambas is writing is all nonsense but this is true that nair women or nair community maintains a matriarchal family a matrilineal family that they are married to one person only or two per one person there may be some relaxation in sexual relationship nair must have been a more permissive society but marriage was done with one nambudri or nair with one person and it is actually that person only who at the time of birth of a child takes the responsibility of providing for expenses of rites and rituals so there are versions and there have to be versions if the backgrounds of different writers is different it's after all not a science but, but um, right now my purpose is only to explain the variations to show the forms that family takes in different societies and not get bogged down to what is happening in the nair community or is it good or bad sociologists are not to evaluate what is good or bad anything that exists exists and if it exists there must have been some reasons for example just now uh, mr yadav told me that the reason why uh, in john sar bauer polyandry existed one woman and several men the purpose was to ret- retain the family uh, the whole property landed property in the family and to ensure that the landed property does not get divided now in nair family also uh, a woman after marriage remains in mother's family mother is more powerful matriarchal matrilineal the lineage is from mother side and it's matrifocal because after marriage they are living at their mother's place it's a different story in some other book i i found another version that it was matrilineal matrifocal matriarchal only for name sake the actual power in that family was enjoyed again by a male and that male was maternal uncle of a child it was not woman but woman's brother who exercise power in practice so it's only a theory that women that nair society nair community was matriarchal matrifocal matrilineal even there men were powerful 
and similarly in many patriarchal societies or patriarchal patrifocal forms you will find that it is not the male head of the family who exercises power on new bride but it is mother in law our tv serials our stories fictional works history religion is full of strange relationship between mother in law and daughter in law so although we call it patriarchy yes in one sense it uh, our dominant hindu family is uh, patriarchal patrilineal your father is chakravarti you are also chakravarti your father is sharma you are sharma it does not matter what your mother is your father is chakravarti mother is ghosh but you remain chakravarti lineage comes from father side in matrilineal society examples of matrilineal society in northeast if you go to manipur side or among certain tribes specifically like khasi they still exercise matrilineal kind of family uh, and i have heard that when uh, boys from uh, northeast come to places like jnu for studies uh, they get a cultural shock because in uh, boys girls because in their own community a girl is more powerful when a girl is born the whole community celebrates when a son is born the community feels sad so they come from matrilineal matriarchal kind of system and when they come to delhi for studies they find themselves in a very different world which is patriarchal and patrilineal so there is a cultural shock it will take uh, them some time to adjust in the new framework uh i don't uh, regarding origin of family i don't know what is correct but in several books it is maintained that family has undergone a change from a situation of promiscuity or uh group marriages all men are men all women are women all men are husbands all women are wives promiscuity a group marriage to polygamy as time pass and one sociologist or anthropologist established that there has been a trend like this they must explain what happened why promiscuity or group marriages or collective marriages led to a system of polygamy and from polygamy to monogamy and today in post industrial society varieties there are varieties of family not one type of family varieties of family this is you can call tribe ancient this is uh, advanced agricultural this is industrial and this is post industrial varieties means some examples of varieties uh, single single person either a man or a woman living alone throughout life some of them with adopted child so there is no presence of adult of both sexes in that family or gay family lesbian both are men hom- homosexuals two men living together common residence economic cooperation 
sexual relationship there is no possibility of reproduction but they can adopt a child and they satisfy them many requirements of peter murdoch's definition of family except that both of them belong to the same sex lesbians women two women transgenders so it has become a matter of choice it does not mean that monogamy has ended there are the dominant of the dominant form of family is still monogamy in united states in europe is still majority of people live in monogamous family and in monogamous family it may be father centered it may be mother centered among african americans or blacks mother centered family of the type of nair family is still very much in existence and there are regions uh, when divorce rate is high then the women depend more on their own women relatives than on men so they form a kind of collectivity and they live with their uh, own or adopted children so as time pass the nature of family changes what actually happened here cannot be known as such but social scientists have drawn inferences about this from the studies of tribal society which are still living in primitive condition and for example uh, in central australia in the tribal communities of central australia anthropologists found an interesting distinction according to age that all the senior persons means elderly people all the elderly people of the community were called fathers and mothers the term father was used for old men all old men are fathers all old women are mothers all adult men are called husbands all adult wives or adult women are called wives all young males are called sons all young females are called daughters and uh, from this they infer that there must have been a practice of collective marriage or group marriage or promiscuity in the tribal society in the past and they draw inference that perhaps in the past in primitive society or in ancient times everywhere there must have been this kind of group marriage because then only it makes sense if all elderly people are father or mother if all adults are wives or husbands if all smaller ones are sons and daughters then it indicates the prevalence of collective marriage there are many other variations um, now since i do not want to keep on talking about family so regarding this classification of family i will stop here only one thing that comes to my mind readily is that in israel nearly 4% population of israel lives in what they call kibbutz that is another type of family kibbutz 4% of population of israel lives in the system they call kibbutz k i b b u t z in kibbutzum it's a kind of socialist uh, society egalitarian society there is a small house 
comprising of one bedroom and one living room there is no kitchen or any and in the house one man one adult man and one adult woman live together husband and wife now children are raised separately there is a separate arrangement for children community arrangement and all the children belong to the community to kibbutz there are no personal sons or daughters and this system is very much in practice even today there is no personal son or personal daughter all the children belong to kibbutz all the requirements of life are met by the community so for food for services for clothes services say as a barber agricultural implements religious services all services are common initially when children are small parents can spend a few hours with the child their own children at the place where children are kept you know some kind of say hostel or children's home hmm? all children are separated from their parents so only initially and that is called fun time that has nothing to do with socialization of children or inculcating norms and values of society fun time parents can spend some time with their children when children are small that is fun time that has nothing to do with meeting the requirements of children or socialization that is also a kind of family what will you say whether George Peter Murdoch's definition applies to that family or not? Some people will say yes, it applies to that also. Some say there is a controversy. So family has changed. The kind of family we have in mind today, monogamous family, this is the product of industrial society. Now, the, some ideas on family, a theoretical perspective on family. I will just indicate. two or three functional perspective cooperation and conflict in the context of cooperation and conflict i mentioned functionalism marxism interactionism this is micro theory and these are macro one from the perspective of equilibrium cooperation another from the perspective of conflict the functions of family are obvious functions of family peter murdoch's definition itself shows what are the functions of family functions of family are reproduction sexual satisfaction love affection emotional bond economic cooperation and a we feeling a feeling of happiness it's a primary group face to face function of family socialization of children inculcating norms and values of society family is still the most important or the primary agency of socialization most of the things with long lasting impact have been learned in your father's family your religious views your views about humanity your views about altruism your relationship with society your goals of life your values your priorities have been determined largely by what you have learned in the family 
so if human society is about culture which is passed from one generation to another it is done in the context of family so these are all economic cooperation a unit of production and consumption sexual relationship emotions development of personality stabilization of personality emotions recreation now these are the functions of a family which are very much part of the definition of george peter murdo more interesting are the views of mars now mars follows that line of research in which it is believed that at one time family was matrilineal matriarchal ancient society agricultural society pre industrial society they had matrilineal matriarchal society gradually with industrialization or a little before that in advanced forms of feudalism feudalism when there is a class formation when there was no property no property no family in the sense in which we understand the term family there was no property no surplus the whole wandering and food gathering or hunting group collected food from hunting from forest roots fruits herbs consumed together and lived like men and women there was no family no class no family no property when there is no property there is no need for family but now in feudal society or as society advances and private property emerges so some people have property others are property less those who have property they want to ensure that their property remains with them but they will die so it was in that context in the context of class formation when there is private property then desire to desire to retain it in the family how can that desire be met that desire can be met by having one or two wives or more one or two or more one or two or more monogamy or polygamy one or two wives or more wives who are is strictly separated from other men now this ensures then social cultural religious restrictions are placed on the movement of women and this is how family begins when there was no property and the life of the whole tribe or the whole band whole food gathering wandering hunting group was adventurous precarious and there were all kinds of environmental risk risk of attack from wild animals risk of food shortage risk of flood famine a natural catastrophe risk of epidemics the whole group lived together and there was no family 
if at all based on the works of some anthropologists Frederick Engels a close associate of Karl Marx believed that 90% of the time in human history has been spent in that state in which woman was more powerful but with the emergence of property there is a downfall of women's status the reason is this that there is a private property and the estates the feudal lords the owners of agricultural land or the managers possessors of agricultural land or the owners of means of production in general land is specific to feudal society you can call it means of production in general that those who own means of production in capitalist society industry raw material land shares debentures the owners of means of production who have lot of private property they desire to retain their property with them only or with their biological heirs their own bio biological heirs how can they ensure that their property remains with them or their own biological heirs that is by marrying one or two or more women and putting restriction on their movement so that they do not come in contact with other men various kinds of restrictions are placed on women's movement the after the development of feudal society the whole human history is the history of enslavement of women a, a feminist would say a feminist critical theorist or a feminist would say that the whole history of human society of last 500 years also is the history of enslavement of women by men and at the root of that is emergence of private property you must have noticed some of you who come from a village setup you must have seen that in several villages even now women particularly married women are not supposed to even show their face to an outsider and why outsider other male members of the family also husbands elder brother or brothers cannot ever see the face of the woman a woman cannot leave the house without mother in law's permission she cannot go to market she can not dare to go to her native place she cannot decide anything to buy for the family she cannot sell anything there are very strictly defined codes for married women the purpose is that the child that this woman bears is the child of her husband only and mars and angels would say that when you see disparity gender disparity in society disparity may be economic educational political and we see that there is gender disparity now in this class i find that there are four or five women all are men out of 100 students there are only five or six women all others 95 or 94 are men are women incapable of pursuing engineering studies or science studies biologically now marxists will say that no women are as capable as men and women have proven women have proven that in all walks of life they can be as good or maybe better than men today cbse result has come the pass percentage for women is higher than pass percentage for men in in all fields women have proven political science education culture in all fields women have proven that they are not inferior to men but everywhere today you find a gender disparity sociologists use a common term for this a gender disparity or a gender bias 
specific roles for males and females roles are different right from the beginning roles are differently assigned to women and men gender bias all fields gender bias and at the root of gender bias according to mars and angels is the emergence of private property and marxist writers think that as long as you have private property as long as you have class formation in society or you have a capitalist society and there is a distinction between owners of means of production and laborers this will get reflected in gender bias uh, and in inequality between men and women in different domains you know, gradually you can also see what marxists mean when they say that morality law education everything is determined by relations of production when there is no property everyone is equal women are not inferior to men as a matter of fact in much of human history women were considered to be superior to men 90% of the time of human history has been spent in those social formations in which women were superior to men like the situation in khasi tribe like the situation in john sar bauer or nair women or eskimo women or australian tribal women type but now with the emergence of industrialization capitalism private property and a desire to retain their personal property so that classes remain form their personal property to their own heirs uh, there is the gender bias others like uh, interactionists are very unhappy with family and many interactionists have analyzed cases of mental illness like schizophrenia split personality and they find that in several cases uh, the cause of schizophrenia or the split personality was the presence of conflict in the family if mother and father have conflicting relationship in one case it was found that father and his parent were on one side in all the whole day in family there was conflict father and parent on one side mother and parent on another side and the child was placed in a dilemma whose side to take and this child gradually developed a personality a split personality or schizophrenia a psychological disorder the reason was a split a conflict in the family relationship so uh, these interaction is sociologists are more concerned with reality at the micro level they are more interested in analyzing cases of deviance mental disorder etc etc and relate that to family formation they are critical of family feminists are particularly critical of family because they think that the basis of gender bias in our society is family huh? and they think that if women are to acquire their rightful place in society then family must be attacked interestingly family survives but on some or other ground several people leaders ideologies organizations states have been attacking the family system families do not want family because they think that family is the infrastructure on which the superstructure of inequality between men and women has been developed marxists do not want family because for marxists family is associated with private property and that means the basic inequality between men and women will go only at that time when the class inequality will vanish and class inequality can vanish in a socialist society when means of production have been collectivized and there are no individual 
or private owners of means of production. Ironical, uh, if you do not agree with Marx, it looks like the same kind of thing, a utopia as uh, during the freedom struggle, everyone believed under the leadership of Gandhiji that after independence, a kind of Ram Raj will come and in Ram Raj, there will be no problem of any kind. No regional inequality, no caste differences, no economic inequalities, uh, no corruption, no bribe, no dishonesty, no fraud, a moral society of equals. And everybody believed in that. Students, tribals, men, women, poets, historians, writers, people belonging to different regions, cultures, religions, Ram Raja has not come. And likewise, in socialist society also you find that although means of production have been collectivized, but the disparity between men and women continues, but it gets reduced. It gets reduced. In China, in erstwhile Soviet Russia, women were quite powerful. I was, uh, I was telling that in Soviet Russia, Marxist Leninist party continued to attack family for a long time. They wanted that family be abolished. There is a society of equals, means of production are collectivized, there are no classes, everyone is equal. So in that society of equals, let people live with persons of their liking. And actually in that society, only true liking, true emotions, true love, true affection will come. Today behind love and affection, um, most of the time, it is some kind of economic exchange. When that economic exchange goes, uh, then only we will have true love, true affection. And this is true that in Soviet Russia, proportion of women on political bureau, in universities, in industries, in hospitals, in literature, everywhere in all walks of life improved tremendously, though women have never come to the same level exactly to which uh, men have gone. China, China also, but uh, despite uh, all the efforts of Chinese society, problems of women have remained. And therefore, feminists say that the problem, feminist perspective, feminists say that the problems of women are universal and they have nothing to do with religion or ideology or region or this or that. If women want equality, they will have to organize, they will have to think on the issue of men-women relationship and they must fight the system of inequality. So families find, yeah, like in China, uh, despite efforts to improve the status of women, uh, Chinese women in, in some sense suffered uh, suffered maximally from a patriarchal order. Uh, I will stop by giving just one example of how women suffer uh, in China, despite communist ideology, despite Marxism, Leninism. Now for a different reason, economic reason, demographic reason, China decides one child policy. That couples will produce only one child. If you produce a second child, then every month from your salary, say, something like 10 percent may be deducted. If you produce a third baby, you will be imprisoned. With such strictness, one child policy was enforced. But in terms of values and religion, China remained a feudal society. And in agricultural society, obviously, the need for a son is more than the need for a daughter. So one child policy simply strengthened the male bias and led to enormous rise in cases of female feticide or forced sterilization of women. Women suffered. They did not have forced sterilization of men. In, in their village communes, they had forced sterilization of women, not forced sterilization of men. And the uh, degree of female feticide or the effect on sex ratio that one child policy in China had is not seen anywhere else. India is nowhere near 
the atrocities uh, committed on women due to the one child policy so women have some problems unique to them and for families it is only when the women organize together and destroy the family system of today that there will be real equality between men and women thank you